How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little booty in it. Today, I'm going to recap a 2008 action thriller film called Body of Lies. A quick warning, there will be major spoilers ahead. Towards the start of the movie, Ed Hoffman speaks to his CIA superiors. He explains to them how terrorists are turning their back on technology by throwing away their phones and computers and using old methods of communicating face-to-face -face and with written messages. This terrorist retreat into the Stone Age, paradoxically, makes the strengths Hoffman has to deploy worthless and increases his dependence on Ferris and his human intelligence. Roger Ferris is a CIA paramilitary operations officer. He is in Iraq trying to track down a terrorist called al Salim. While following a lead, Ferris's asset, with whom he has become good friends, is killed during a car chase involving terrorists, rocket-propelled grenades, and two missile-firing U.S. helicopters. Ferris recovers from his injuries at a U.S. facility in Qatar, before he is sent to Jordan to run down some intelligence he recovered in Iraq. Meanwhile, unknown terrorists plan to follow up an off-screen series of bus bombings in Sheffield, with more attacks in Manchester, but blow themselves up when the police find their cell. Ferris and his handler Hoffman are strongly contrasting characters. Ferris acts on the human scale, relying heavily on trust and human intelligence. Hoffman is more Machiavellian and keeps tabs on Ferris via a Sikorsky Cypher UAV. In Jordan, Ferris tosses the ineffectual station chief out of his office before meeting Hani Salem, head of the Jordanian General Intelligence Department, GID. Salem and Ferris form a fragile and complex bond. Salem is deeply aware that whatever he thinks of Ferris, his duty is to his country, while Ferris acts for the CIA, whose interests cannot intersect with those of Jordan. Salem demands one thing of Ferris, never lie to him. Hoffman finds an al Salim safe house in Jordan and orders Ferris to conduct a surveillance operation on it, covertly. Simultaneously, he organizes another operative, Skip, to conduct an operation without Ferris's consent. Skip botches the operation, blowing his cover by divulging compromising information to a terrorist from a safe house. As the terrorist takes off running and intent on releasing the information that the safe house has been compromised, Ferris makes chase. Bitten by dogs in the run, Ferris ultimately kills the runner. Hanny covers up the killing by passing it off as a robbery, and Ferris accuses Hoffman of running side operations, telling Hoffman to lay off. Tending his wounds in hospital, Ferris meets a nurse named Asia. Around them, the swirl of terror animating the action continues as cell phone triggered bombing in an Amsterdam flower market that kills at least 7 to 5 people. Having recognized one of the men living in the safe house as well known suspect Mustafa Karami, Hani takes Karami out into the desert and coerces him into working for Jordanian intelligence, threatening to set him up as a collaborator if he does not cooperate. He has been sending money to Karami's mother and making it appear as if it came from her reformed and successful son so she doesn't know Karami is still a thief, and now an aspiring Al-Qaeda terrorist, and he is shamed and surprised when Hanny does not kill him but lets him ride away on his bicycle. Hoffman asks Hanny to hand Karami over to the CIA, most likely to interrogate him, but Hanny refuses, having earlier told Ferris he does not believe in torture. Unknown to Ferris and Hanny, Hoffman tells Ferris's CIA subordinate to follow Karami and kidnap him. Karami gets away and notifies the terrorists in the safe house that it is being watched, resulting in the safe house being lit on fire and abandoned. Ferris's partner is caught, and Hanny professes his belief that Ferris had knowledge of the move on Karami, and therefore blames his lack of honesty with Hanny for the destruction of the safe house. Hanny gives Ferris 12 hours to leave Jordan. Ferris comes back to the States for a while and argues with Hoffman, whom he derides as power-hungry and fat. He then comes up with a plan to make contact with the terrorist al Salim by staging a significant terrorist attack, the logic being that al Salim will hear about this attack and try to make contact with the terrorist group who committed it. With the help of one of Hoffman's CIA friends, Ferris is able to frame a Jordanian architect named Omar Sadiki by posing as a financier contracting a bank's construction in the United Arab Emirates, making him look like the head of a terrorist cell. The terrorist attack is staged at the Incirlik Air Base in Turkey. A bomb is exploded in the base, and Ferris uses unclaimed local bodies dressed as soldiers to make it seem that soldiers were killed in the attack. Al Salim sees the report of the attack on television and tries to make contact with Sadiki. Hani tells Ferris to come back to Jordan because he knows that he needs Ferris. 
Hani then talks to Ferris about his suspicions that Omar Sadiki is a terrorist. Ferris hides that this is not the case and acts as if he doesn't know anything concerning Hani's suspicions. Ferris later tries to save Sadiki from being kidnapped by Al Salim's henchmen, but fails and sees another CIA agent nearly killed in the subsequent car crash. Sadiki informs Al Salim that Ferris made it seem he committed the terrorist attack. Sadiki is killed. Ferris goes back to his apartment and finds out that Aisha, in whom Ferris is romantically interested, has been kidnapped. He then desperately asks Hani for his help, explaining to Hani that he made up Omar Sadiki's terrorist cell and the terrorist attack supposedly committed by Sadiki was fate. However, Hani refuses to help Ferris because Ferris lied to him. Ferris gets a call from the kidnappers and is told to wait for a van. The van picks him up and drops him in the desert. Meanwhile, back in CIA headquarters, Hoffman is watching everything via an unmanned aerial vehicle. Ferris is then picked up by a group of men in SUV, and the vehicles create a massive cloud of dust before splitting up. Hoffman is unable to follow Ferris because he has no idea which car he is in. Ferris is taken to be interrogated by Al Salim, just across the border in Syria. When Ferris asks Al Salim about Asia, Al Salim tells Ferris that someone has lied to him and he has been double crossed. Ferris tells Al Salim that there is an infiltrator in his organization who works for Ferris, and that by association, Al Salim works for Ferris. Al Salim smashes two of Ferris's fingers with a hammer before turning on a video camera and ordering Ferris to be killed. Al Salim then leaves. Ferris is prepared by Al Salim's men to be executed on video. As Ferris is about to be executed, Hani and his team of Jordanian SF burst into the room, killing all of the terrorists. Al Salim is seen leaving the building and unwittingly getting into a car, driven by Hani's men who arrest him. While in the hospital, Ferris is visited by Hani, who reveals to him that it was his men who kidnapped Asia. Using blood, she donated regularly at work to make it appear she'd been killed or wounded. He then brokered a deal with Al Salim, using Karami. He would deliver CIA agent Ferris to him for money. It was one of Hani's men who rang Ferris and dropped him in the desert. Since Karami was Hani's man, inside Al Salim's organization, he was able to locate Ferris and Al Salim in time to save Ferris and arrest Al Salim. Aisha has been released unharmed, but does not know what role her kidnapping played. In the end, Hoffman offers Ferris a job in his office, but Ferris declines and tells Hoffman that he is quitting the CIA. Hoffman prepares to leave Jordan and resigns himself to Ferris not changing his mind. At the movie's end, Ferris seemingly decides to not contact Asia, therein refuting what Hoffman had repeated numerous times through the movie. No one is innocent. Hoffman is shown speaking with CIA operatives, watching Ferris in the market buying pastries, in a box similar to that which he had taken to Asia's. Hoffman declares that Ferris is no longer an asset. It is left to the viewer to decide whether Ferris leaves Asia to live her life or becomes involved with her once again. If you enjoy this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. You should watch the full movie. Thank you very much for watching.